Real, Landon. Real. Keep reeling. Keep reeling. Oh. So, uh, sort of per usual, we've been hitting the swimmies pretty hard. So, uh, there's the color right there. The green color shift shad that is using Dip Your Car ZTG Hyper Shift Pigment for that green top. It sort of shifts to blue. Uh, if you're interested in some of these pigments, my affiliate link is in the description under my link tree. Just go to the uh, pigments there. Um, this one, this one I always like to. I call, I kind of call this one Green Hickory Shad. It's got a very uh, pearlescent highlight vein there, sort of hidden, and um, sort of a brownish green top. It, it it looks brown in certain lighting, so. That's one of my favorites. These were really fun. These are some layer cakes right here. Yeah, check this out. We've got a three-tier tail. There's three colors just in the tail section. It kind of mirrors the rest of the body. Then we've got that sort of, um, you know, pinkish, purple, reddish, you know, whatever you want to call that. We have that vein kind of hidden in there. So uh, they're very trout-like, so I call that one golden trout because it has all that gold in it. Last but not least, one of my new favorites. This is a recipe that I've kind of recently gotten onto. This is my brown gizzard shad. The same gold vein that's in that one is the gold <clears throat> that's in that one. So just real quick, these are the pigments. That's the ZTG Hypershift, just the letters ZTG wore off. So that's for that one. And then the Merlot red right there is that red vein that you see there. And then the gold is this gold alloy. I, I believe it's called gold alloy, uh, also from Dip Your Car. So, yeah, a couple different pigments there and a couple different uh, uses. All right, everyone, welcome back to uh, the World's Worst Fishing Lure Making TV. I'm your host, Chris Jones, and uh, welcome to this video bait blog um so yeah anyway um i think what we're gonna do is in the spirit of a bait blog i'm going to show you a recipe for one of those shad colors uh that i've never shown on camera um because i want to make it again but i want to try it in the five inch configuration and then really special hopefully coming up tomorrow my dad and I are taking Landon fishing to catch his first ever fish on camera. Um, he has been all about going fishing. We've been practicing our casting and reeling with uh, with some of the small, just little Happy Meal size fishing rods. I mean, he can actually use a real fishing pole. I have to help him cast it, but he understands the concept. He's been asking to go fishing. So what we're gonna do is a little bit of a bait blog, and then hopefully, Y'all are going to get to see a defining moment in Landon's life and my own as the old dad with his very own fish catch. Okay, so we have all of our um, five inchers <coughs> um, opened up here and laid out because we have to pour in the shad dots, right? So, um, you know, one of the most characteristic parts of, of a shad pattern is the kill dot. So this picture right here is kind of where I got the inspiration for that brown gizzard that I showed you at the beginning of the video. So that's what we're gonna try to do in the five incher. And uh, you know, if, if you look at any shad, you really can't miss that big black kill dot, you know? So, um, you know, that's why I make it a point to pour so many kill dots is, you know, hey, I wouldn't make a red belly sunfish without the red belly. So how can I make an authentic shad pattern without the single most characteristic part, the, the kill dot? So that is what we are about to do, is pour 28 individual kill dots. First, we're gonna go ahead and fire up the plate, get that preheat, oh, you know what? It's not plugged in, hold on. So uh, we got the uh, hot plate heating up there, so it's, uh, it's really cool to watch this thing work. You know, you have this PID controller that normally keeps it within a few degrees of the optimal temperature. And so you can actually set exact temps to get completely controlled pouring results here. And uh, there's just nothing like it. Uh, if you haven't seen the whole, the, the video on it, check out the video on the first ever 
hot plate for bait makers, this thing has already been a game changer. And just real quick, for anyone who has not seen the whole pouring a kill dot thing, I literally do it for each individual mold. So here we go. Trying to put emphasis on the size and location of it. So that one's actually maybe a smidge too big. So we're gonna get rid of that one. Pour it again. You know, the more accurate I am here, the uh, I, the happier I am with the overall thing. Yeah, there we go. That's sized a little bit more appropriately. And I always like to space them sort of right at sort of the top end of where the gill plate kind of ends, right? Just like that. I, uh, I think that always looks good. So we'll do one for this side real quick. Yeah. Just like that. Looks like I spilled a few drops of plastic on that mold down there. So more or less, you know, that's what we're working with. And, and the, I always like to pour them a little imperfectly, right? I don't want it to be a completely circular round dot. You can do that, but a shad dot in nature isn't necessarily a perfect circle. So I want to make these a little imperfect on purpose. And there you go. There are all 14 molds laid out and uh, you can see pretty even spacing of, of the kill dots. You know, I put a lot of emphasis on the size and spacing them consistently. So about the same diameter and in the same place, mold to mold to mold to mold. Um, the more I take my time there, the better the whole set of baits looks. They, they, they just look more uniform. Okay, so this is Dead On Plastics Black Label Swim Bait Blend. Only plastic that I like to use for the five inches. <coughs> and um, the belly color is just straight white pearl. But it's not a lot of white pearl. You know, again, we like to work in smidges. Okay, so this is just a little bit of white pearl. And I want the belly to be a very see-through white pearl so that it will actually kind of take on a little bit of color from the gold vein and the brown top. That to me gives it a really great illusion where it actually makes the belly color look like it's not white. Um, it's incredibly natural, super lifelike in person. And um, this is sort of step one. How to get there is to just have a very, very, yeah, very, very see-through Right, you can barely even see anything, but a very see-through white pearl belly. Okay, we're actually gonna go ahead and mix up the vein color um, before, uh, again, uh, dead on black, black bucket swim bait blend. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and mix up the vein color before we go ahead and pour the bellies just to have it ready. Um, and this is that gold alloy. Let's see if I can get it to focus. Eh, doesn't wanna do it. Well. Anyway, this is a super cool pigment, and uh, it's a very light saturated pigment, so I actually have to put a lot of it in to get the effect that I want. That's actually a lot more powder than what we would use with the white pearl. So just uh, kind of the way that two different things uh, react, I guess. Sorry about the shadows. Lighting's a little challenged today. It's very kind of dark out, and so we are largely filming under artificial light. Yeah, maybe a little bit more. A little bit more there. Any of y'all ever seen that movie, Robin Hood, Men in Tights? It's, a, it's an oldie, but it's a goldie. And uh, Latrine, the witch up in the tower, the way that she mixes up her recipes. Blood of a hen, a little bit more blood. Oh yeah, eyeballs of a crocodile. I always imagine her <laughs> when I'm mixing up recipes because maybe I'm odd, but yeah, there it is. All right, let's get these bellies poured. I'll just show y'all one or two. I know that y'all have seen me pour this mold a lot on this channel, but uh, it's a never ending challenge. 
That's why I love doing it so much. Just the whole hand pour gig. Yeah. Looking good. Next. Like I said, I'll only show y'all just a few of these. Just over the top of that hook slot. Beautiful. Slow and steady, slow and steady. Yes, sir, we got a bunch of rain coming down right as we are trying to pour. So we will do the best that we can do here for y'all. Okay, so we got all the veins poured in and uh, they are looking very, very, very good. Okay, molds are super hot. If you uh, spit water on them, they are boiling which uh, tells me that they are good temperature to pour. We're gonna get a nice, even bond, and um, yeah, what an awesome thing. Okay, <clears throat> so for the top color, uh, we really, really have to do some color blending here. <clears throat> All right, so a couple drops of brown. Any brown will do. This is just kind of the first brown that I normally reach for. It's available and I'm familiar with it, okay? So again, a couple drops of brown. I believe that was about five or so, okay? Yeah, we're definitely gonna stir some bubbles into this, but that's okay. All right, a couple drops of brown, and then we wanna darken it up. <clears throat> darken it and take some of the brown away with some, drop, with some drops of black, okay? So here's one, two, and we'll do three. Three drops of black. That will change it a lot, see? can already see it darkening up. So now we have sort of this dark chocolate. Okay. <clears throat> oh yeah, looking good. And then we'll maybe thicken it with a few more drops of brown. One, two, three, four for good luck. But then the secret ingredient is to add some more of this gold alloy to it. <clears throat> Just a little bit so that it kind of has that gold shimmer which complements the gold in that vein okay and this gold powder also helps to then brighten your mix so i start with brown i darken it and then i kind of brighten it back up and paralyze it with a little bit of gold see that right there yeah doesn't that look awesome that is a lovely shade of brown Again, sorry that lighting is a little bit better, but that is essentially it. All right, let's top one of these off for y'all on camera. Yeah. Love having a truly level, even plate to heat on, or uh, excuse me, to pour on because I get such good level results topping them off. I don't get overspill to either side because the plastic is settling out evenly since we're actually on a flat level surface. Oh, what a beautiful, beautiful thing. Just look at it. All right, molds at 301 degrees right now. And uh, yeah, just kind of Take a look at how well and how evenly they filled out. No overspill. And um, that's, uh, that's always what you want to see right there. So here is the color again. Um, it's, it's a fairly simple recipe. You just have to really, really have an eye for the top color. But there it is. Something you can absolutely try at home. So we are live streaming. Eddie the Beast Hall and the Thor Mountain Guys boxing match. Crazy. We're in the fifth round. Going on the sixth round here. Crazy. Can't believe one of these guys hasn't knocked the other one out yet. All right. There it is. Just took the first one out. Look at that. I love how the top turned out see-through enough to where we can kind of see through it there. And um, look at uh, look at how good that gold pearl, that gold alloy, kind of just blends in with that vein. Particularly when you put some of that gold alloy, uh, alloy in the top color. So yeah, it kind of smooths out that transition. 
and then from the bottom you can kind of see through that belly color so yeah awesome awesome got a great bond shad dots looking fresh yeah I think those are winners we're gonna get the rest of them out yes 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 that came out awesome really really smooth laminate lines really good transition of color um, excellent bond no cracking <coughs> no micro cold cracks uh, because there is the visible cold cracks and then there are micro cold cracks uh, at least just what I call micro cold cracks and uh, we got all of that out so yeah awesome set of baits could not be uh, happier with how these came out what I'll probably do is I'll probably slap some eyeballs on them tomorrow and then show you all of those and then like I said we are taking Mr. Landon fishing real Landon real keep reeling keep reeling oh real here Re reel over your arm just just like we do at home reel it in reel it in come on real buddy you know how to do it don't just look at it reel it real real buddy Landon real Landon real real buddy here here Landon <laughs> Yeah, buddy. That's a nice friend. Fish. Good job. You touched the fish. All right, Landon. Here, can you can you take that off? Awesome, buddy. Hey, you you helped catch the fish, so that's a good start. All right. Great job, Landon. All right, so Landon's having fun with uh pretending but we're still look at this shell cracker buddy look at that Man, I big am, fish I that's right big fish that's a big shell cracker miles that's a shell cracker isn't he cool he's got a big mouth on him well we got a little swamp lizard coming to check on us see if we're catching any see if we're catching any brim that he can eat unfortunately not really well, I'll feed him all these fish. I'll get well, no, we're not going to feed him our fish. <laughs> Wait, Landon, is that alligator silly? There he is. Little, little, you can barely see him in there now. Well, I had a pretty slow brim trip, but uh, we got six or seven really nice ones, just not enough to really get the camera on. We, we never got a steady bite for me to film, but Landon did get to reel a fish in. He just didn't quite complete it, so we'll do that next time as he uh, gets a little more used to things. But uh, we are headed back to the ramp right now, and uh, I'll show you all the fish once we get there. Got some really nice ones, and then we'll take a look at those uh, swim baits that we poured last night. Well, there's what we managed. Uh, we got one fine shell cracker here. Well, yeah, y'all saw that one earlier. And uh, really, really nice, just kind of, I guess just bluegill, you would call it. A couple more shell crackers. And uh, the first one, the one that Landon helped reel in, was sort of this, uh, this is a long gear sunfish. So, yeah, river brim as we like to call them. So, yeah, just enough for a cocktail, a little fish cocktail. So I think, uh, I think Dad's gonna take the fish home and uh, hopefully he'll enjoy those. So, awesome, awesome, you know. Uh, we, we really didn't have enough action to get the boys really on some fish, uh, particularly Landon. You know, he basically only was interested in that first one. You know, the other ones were just real sporadic. So um, we will definitely have to try this again to have some more action for y'all and for Landon. Well, we made an unscheduled stop at Happy Jack's house, and uh, a bunch of dogs just ran up to me. What's up, y'all? What are you doing? Uh, we got off the lake. The brim, the brim were slow. Were they really? Well, we wound up with like six oh, or something. Yeah, um, Come on. But, Come on. but hey, hey, a couple of them were studs though. All right. So, what do y'all have more of, dogs or vehicles? Uh, Good lord! Get... Look at this. So I caught Happy Jack making some AR worms. You really caught me unexpectedly. He is planning on catching some fish, which. Uh, we all know that's not going to happen. Oh yeah, big pot of June bug. Well, it's like June bug purple. So I had okay. June bug left over. Okay. And that one, so I just mix it all together. Right on. Yeah. 
Run, still running the DOP flakes like a boss. So that's, yeah, I'm gonna need some more plastic. Dude, I just filled you up last video. Well, if you saw how many worms I Literally, y'all, y'all saw it last video. We filled Happy Jack up. Well, okay, so I've made. Dude, you have made some juice. Well, this was my first try and I put, I don't do the drops. I just add it until it looks just right. Just add it until it looks right. So dude, dude, that's all I do. You have baits hanging from your porch like Christmas lights and I love it. Like, this is great. You're gonna like these. This is the way baits that should be done. This this is the way that bait bait making should be done. Here's my favorite June bug that I've made. That's great. This is this is where real baits are made that actually catch fish. Not 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 unlike mine. Oh beautiful dude. Yeah. So I did the Yeah, that's that's some good looking June bug. Alright, so there they are. We are back in the fish cave. And uh, we have some fish skull earth eyes that are gonna go perfect with those. And I just so happen to have the six inch counterpart to this color also with an earth eye in 10 millimeter. So we're going to basically have the exact same color with the exact same eyeball, just in two different sizes of the exact same mold. Pretty good getting the color close considering I don't really write down recipes. You know, as long as you kind of know what to do, um, you can keep it fresh every time, but generally get the same color. So that is without two written recipes. And you can see a little bit of difference, right, in the browns, okay? So the five inchers, you can tell there's a little bit more black in that brown top. You know, it's just a, a hair darker. But the two colors virtually look the same. So a little bit of variation uh, never hurt anybody. Yeah, there they are. Is that not a beautiful, beautiful gizzard pattern? And uh, you know, to me, it really kind of encompasses the whole color profile of the uh, example picture that I showed y'all earlier. And um, you know, again, looks looks awesome in, in both sizes. You know, the six and the five, of course. You could pour this in the four, in the four inch mold. You could also use this, uh, you could do this pattern in the bloodline swim bait mold, right? Just, just do that sort of uh, gold alloy in the bloodline and then inject the brown and um, pearl laminate. So yeah, you could do lots of things. You could do this in a worm, anything you want. So yeah, you know, it, it may look like a, a basic shad color, oops, but a lot of times trying to get a really natural looking shad can be some of the hardest stuff, you know? I've been pouring for several years now and have never come up with this exact color. So, you know, there's always another color to chase, you know. No matter how many you've done, there's always another way to do it. There's always another color that can still just blow you away that you hadn't thought of yet. So, anyways, there is a good one to try right there. Well, all right, everyone. A little bit of everything in this video. We, uh, Looked at a bunch of stuff, we poured some baits, we took Landon out fishing, and uh, had some success. You know, he actually was making an attempt to reel in the fish for a little bit. I think uh, just the moment uh, got to him, you know, like there were like five people on the boat, and we were all like, reel, 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 reel. And uh, I think he may have just been a tad overwhelmed, but we've been practicing at home, so I have faith that he'll be able to do that successfully soon. And uh, we stopped off at Happy Jacks, Happy Jacks, and I caught him making some baits. So that's good to see him uh, enjoying the hobby. And um, yeah, and then we took a look at those shads. So uh, let me know down in the comments below what your favorite part of the video was. And uh, if you plan on trying that brown gizzard, I think you'll love it. And if you don't have that exact gold, just use whatever gold pearl you have. And uh, <clears throat> if you want a, a darker gold pearl than what you have, um, you know, just add like one drop of black maybe to your pearl mixture and you can sort of kind of tailor your pearls to how you want. You don't always have to use them straight out of the jar. So with all that said, I think we're going to sign off. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. We will see y'all in the next one.